is time now to talk about a fantastic initiative uh, designed to raise awareness about the critical role that guide dogs provide for people with vision impairments. Sydney Swans uh, and the Waratahs, uh, Sydney FC and West Tigers have all joined forces uh, in this great promotion. It's called Kicking Goals for Guide Dogs and Vision Loss. Yeah, and it's great uh, that we are able to welcome right now Sydney Swans star Ryan O'Keefe, of course, uh, to your right of screen, and Beth White, who is vision impaired, but thanks in part to her guide dog, Tina, who's just down here. You can't see uh, Tina below the desk. Uh, Beth doesn't really let that get in the way of living a healthy and happy life. Uh, Beth, where would you be without Tina? Look, honestly, I think I'd be housebound. Um, Tina has given, taken my disability and given me the ability to do anything I would like to do. I'm very lucky. Living in a big city, I imagine, as well. Um, can you imagine being without your guide dog? I can't. I don't think, personally, I could have managed on my own with a vision impairment. Um, guide dogs provide such an exceptional service. It's not only placing the guide dog with the client, they also teach us how to get around the city, how, do we, how to get on and off trains. The, the simple things that, when I had sight, I took for granted, and um, then I realised, wow, how, how do I do this? And they just stepped in and transformed my life. Well, Beth, having a pregnant wife that's a bit slower it gives you appreciation for how hard it is to cross the road in Didn't Sydney. So, there, so uh, just yeah, so I can understand how a guide dog would be so helpful. Uh, you've brought along a big team today, including a few yes. little puppies. Uh, yes. People might think that it's just a case of training up a guide dog and they're good to go, but the expense must be immense to get one of these dogs ready to assist people like you. Absolutely, I believe it's in the vicinity of about thirty thousand dollars to train and place a guide dog with a client. We are so fortunate that that doesn't actually cost me as a visually impaired person this is all from donations that the people um, of Sydney give to the Guide Dog Association. They're a non-profit organisation who solely rely on donations. It hasn't stopped you at all. You've just competed in a triathlon I understand. Congratulations mm -hmm. for doing that. You've got your own massage therapy business. Uh, yes. You're a water skier. There's nothing you can do and, and it's great to see that having your impairment hasn't held you back at all? Not at all. Um, I feel so lucky. I've, I, I had to make a decision at a point in my life where I identified the problem and I had to find a solution. And God Dogs has helped me do that. And now I'm just, I'm so lucky. I've got three beautiful children, um, wonderful husband. And honestly, I just make the most of whatever I can. It doesn't hold me back and I feel very lucky. Yeah, and as we mentioned at the top, part of the, the fact that Tina's get so much help or that Tina can give so much mm -hmm. help is because the four teams we mentioned are supporting Guide Dogs New South Wales and the ACT. Uh, and basically all the, all the teams are dedicating a home game to this wonderful cause. And uh, Ryan O'Keefe from the Sydney Swans, I guess you'd be pretty happy that the Swans put their hand up to get involved with a cause like this. Yeah, definitely. It's such a great cause. And if it's something little that we can do that can help raise awareness and help... Uh, raise some money which can in turn just if it helps only just a few people but at least it's helping someone um, yeah we're just really privileged and honoured to be a part of it it's such a great cause everyone loves dogs uh, your little kids are out there uh, with us now we haven't had dogs in here before Ryan I must point that out to you uh, Levi and Savannah three and a half and, and one and a half so a big welcome to them have you got dogs involved in your family uh, no not anymore um, <laughs> Not yet. I think the key thing, Levi was asking me before if we can get a little puppy, and I said, oh, not quite yet. We'll wait till you grow up. That might be bit. difficult after leaving here today. Oh, no, it might be. But um, yeah, look, the, the kids, are like, yeah, they love the animals. Yeah, they might get a little bit attached. Now, Ryan, while, while you're here, we should talk a little bit of footy. Uh, five wins, a draw, a couple of losses on the season. 27 unanswered points to Fremantle in that final quarter. How did you feel right on the final side? Yeah, disappointing. You take a draw as a loss, pretty much. Uh, that's why we took it. We had, we had the game pretty much secure, and you're right. We just let them let the floodgates open, and they scored heavily <laughs> and very fast, which is very unlike us. So we're really disappointed in that sense that we we had the we had the game should have been won, but you know, to Fremantle's credit, they they were able to score score against us, which is you know, a bit disappointing. After a moment like that, uh, what were the words from from John Longmire immediately after the siren? Uh, yeah, very disappointed, but the scenarios that, that happened in the game, we should have known. We should have been able to deal with that situation, and, and we didn't. And it's up to 
you know, especially our senior players, to make sure when the game's like that, to control it, and, and, and we didn't, so we really let, it, let ourselves down. Funnily enough, though, it's uh, one of the players that's still developing, Sam Reid, hasn't played a lot of footy this year, he's missed a couple of games, hasn't kicked a lot of goals, still developing as a forward, but he took the initiative to actually float back, drop off his man, and take that mark. I mean, that's, that's, a, real, that's a real effort from him, isn't it? Yeah, it was a great grab. Um, yeah, I'm th yeah. Thanks. <laughs> we're pretty thankful that he did take that mark. Um, where where were you when it happened, by the way? Were you close? Or? Uh, yeah, I was sort of front, front, getting ready for front and square. But um, yeah, it was a great, great grab, floated up and took, yeah, took a big pack mark, which was uh, quite handy. Couldn't quite easily gone through. Right, I guess your record against the Pies, well, against the Pies, <laughs> isn't great, particularly in Melbourne. Is it something you, you talk about? Does it play on your mind ahead of this weekend's game at all? Oh, look, it's something that's... Yeah, obviously in the back of your mind, but um, look, I think if we can play the way we did against the last time we played them, um, we give ourselves the best possible opportunity. Um, we can't go down that game being unsure about our, the way we play. We've just got to go out there and, and you know, really play the game we know how to play. Yeah, no doubt one man you'll need to have a close look at is uh, Heath Shaw, who gives some fantastic run off the back line for the Pies. Now, his brother, Reece Shaw, has been missing for six weeks, he's about to miss his seventh week with an abdominal strain. Uh, that sounds a little bit odd, abdominal strain. Is there something else to this injury? No, oh, not really. If you've had a, an abdominal strain, it can take a long time. You don't realise how much your, your abs do play, play a part in any movement. So it's just one, it's just like a like a hammy in, in, uh, hammy, inju, in, uh, hammy in, injury yep. that it just um, it can just take time. And with the amount of pressure that you sort of you put through your core, especially in our game, it's. Um, yeah, it can take a little bit longer than usual. Beth, you run a massage therapy business. I mean, have you had any, any serious injuries yourself? I mean, you, you water ski and you did triathlons, etc. Um, no, not, nothing serious, but it's actually, I even just pulling, um, I pulled my QL last week and it, you learn so much from being able to feel these muscles and then someone comes into you and can describe um, the sensation they've got, you know, you know how to do it, you know how to fix it. And it's, um, that, that's a really wonderful experience that I'm now having since I've started to do more exercise and more um, anything to do with sport. Now, I assume when you're out and about doing this exercise, Tina still comes along? Yes, Tina does to a point, but I'm really fortunate in the sense that when I'm with um, my personal training group, my trainer and my, my friends help me. My girlfriend has helped me do um, the triathlon and we did ran the Mother's Day Classic, the eight kilometre Mother's Day Classic. Tina is starting to get a little bit old. <laughs> She's nearly nine. And I think next my next guide dog, I will train up from a younger age to do a bit more running. Mm -hmm. Tina, Tina likes to to stop and smell the roses. <laughs> this is, is probably a hard question, and you just you just touched on it. Tina's your best friend. Yeah. She, she's your right arm. That's right. It gives you so much independence. Um, there is, and you know, there is going to come a time when you have to move on and, and live with another dog. That's going to be a sad day, I guess. It is sad. Tina's my second dog, so we've actually experienced it before. Um, my first dog, Oaks, was just a beautiful part of our family, and. When he went, it was it was really sad. But guide dogs help make that transition so easy as well, well with Beth, the you, support. Sorry, Beth, you, you mentioned the transition uh, that guide dogs have helped you make, and the fact that this assistance is provided for free. Now yes. that doesn't uh, come from nowhere. Guide dogs, New South Wales and ACT obviously need as much financial support as they can get. Uh, for any viewers watching that might want to contribute or or help out, how can they do so? Well. Um, I believe you can go onto the website for guide dogs or ringing them up. There is um, many avenues to be able to donate. Um, and you often will see throughout the shopping centres little guide dog puppies where you can pop money in the top. Um, you're also able to do fundraising through your own community groups, which is a fantastic thing. So if you went onto the guide dogs webpage, you'd be able to access those um, solutions to be able to donate to guide dogs because honestly I've had now had two dogs and I'm so grateful to everybody out there who's um, given me the privilege of being able to be independent. Well Beth thanks very much for coming in and sharing your experience Ryan thank you also mate for getting involved and a reminder there will be initiative throughout sometime this season 
with the Sydney Swans, helping uh, Guide Dogs New South Wales ACT. Uh, thank you to our other Guide Dog pups who are out there in the audience and uh, your young kids for coming along as well. So Sydney FC, uh, West Tigers, the Waratahs and Sydney Swans all playing a, a big, big role, helping to kick goals for Guide Dogs and Vision Loss. They are a big part of our life and a big thanks to all uh, those that do support Guide Dogs. Plenty more to come on the other side of this short break.